Detail Factory recently released this. This is their Pro Grip Tire Scrub Brush. It's a tire brush, right? How different can it be to some of the others that I've built up over the years? Well, that's something I want to look at today because the way they've gone about this is more of an evolution, not a revolution, but essentially, it's like when we talked about snow foam back in the day, we used to love thick snow foam and snow foam wasn't good unless it was thick. And now we've realized snow foam is actually better when it's a bit thinner and it's got better coverage. So with the same idea with this, they have not reinvented the wheel. They've just changed the way we think about scrubbing your tires. So I'm going to be comparing this to some of the other brushes I've got here, but also to try and figure out why we need something like this Let's talk about the geeky details. How much strength do you need to make them flex? How much flex do these bristles have? How much strengths do they have? What weaknesses do they have? That's all coming up in this video right after the intro. So folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Specky and I make all sorts of detailing related content for your very eyes. But not just that, I've got some for your ears. I have a podcast available if you don't want to sit down and watch videos all the time. Links, as always, will be down in the description below. Now let's talk about the brushes here. What's the difference and why have they gone with this? Detail Factory have decided to go with a softer brush, as in the bristles are softer in some way and yet they're not it's really difficult to describe that's why i've got the lab coat on we're going to test this out we're going to put some weight on these and see how they flex but how they are different i was looking looking at these last night i was looking at all of my brushes just to give myself a, a bit of a closer idea why is this one different first of all it's got as it says it's called the pro grip but it's not just that it says it on the box here right the pro grip Tire scrub brush. I will forgive the spelling, it's American. So the Pro Grip, the idea is that you have this lovely rubber grip. This is all rubber here. Let me get a better view there. So it's all rubber there up to the gray. So everything that is black is rubber and everything that is gray is hard plastic, okay? So you can see it's all the way around, which is nice. That means with the rubberized edge there, it's a bit softer. If you happen to butt up against, for example, when you're scrubbing your tires, if you butt up against your wheel arch or something like that, a piece of bodywork, Hopefully there will be less damage there. Also the same when it comes to your alloy wheel. You're hoping that if you do happen to flip it over and catch the side of your wheel, your wheels are painted. You don't want damage to them. So it's rubberized pretty much everywhere. And there's a good overlap actually coming around the edge here. It doesn't just run on the edge itself, but it actually runs around and into the face area, which is really nice. You've got this lovely uh, bit of ridged grip here. This is helpful for when your hands are wet. You should be wearing gloves just in case, but you know, if you're not, wet hands, you get a bit more grip. So it's really nice, it's ergonomic, I like this. Compare this to a few others. Well, all the other ones I have that are dedicated tire brushes don't have any rubber on them. This was one of my favorites before. I know it's got a Chemical Guys sticker on it, but this is a basically a tough shine brush. That is all hard plastic there. That, everything around it is hard plastic but everything is also angled away, so it's to try and help you stay away from your wheels. Then one of my all time favorites for a very, very long time, this one is the SGCB tire scrubbing brush. It seems to be just a little bit more ergonomic. Um, the angle is different. The grip is good. There's a little place to put my finger in there so I can get a good grip on working against the tires. Uh, it's got a plastic bit of grip there. It's not rubber. It is plastic. The whole body is plastic, but this has been one of my favorites for a long time. I found it nice that the brush bristles, you'll see there that they splay out more. So here they angle out more top and bottom and on the sides, whereas the uh, Tough Shine, it's practically just a square block, isn't it? A rectangular block. So not always ideal. A couple of other options. Someone suggested this one. This is the Vican wheel brush. Generally speaking, this is meant to be for doing your wheel faces because you've got flocked bristles and they're very, very flexible. Not something that's designed to get a lot of scrubbing on the go, but it does have this rubber red section here. So everything red there is rubber. Everything black is plastic, but this one will give you a bit more protection. It's also very splayed out. It's meant to be for, like I said, doing the wheel faces, doing your spokes and things like that. It's a really, really good brush. I do like it. Someone suggested that this would be a good idea for tires, and it is, but I'll explain why in a minute, because I know some of you might be thinking, well, you, you want a bit of bite, you want a bit of strength in your bristles. 
we'll come to that, don't worry. This thing <laughs> is just an abomination. I bought this in a local car parts place and honestly, I'm not entirely sure of what I was thinking. I just thought, I looked at it and I thought, wow, it's really big. I mean, <laughs> you look at this and you compare it to the, the head size of everything else, you know, even this. Um, you know, it's massive, it's wide, it's as long as the Vicon, but it's twice as wide. Um, this is from Black Magic. Um, I don't know who they are. This is rubber to a certain extent. Everything that's black is rubber, so you get good grip. It's also the size of something you could, you know, smack someone off the head with. Um, you'll do a bit of damage with this. And also, if you look here, these uh, indentations on the sides here allow you to get uh, a grip this way. If you want to grab it this way and work on your tires, then you can do that. You don't have to be all the way out here like a club and doing that. Um, I will talk about this later when it comes to the flex, but these are the stiffest bristles of anything I have. And then my very, very first ever tire scrubbing brush as a sort of comparison in this video here is this. <laughs> Most of you will recognize this as a pot washing brush. <laughs> Um, and this was my very, very first ever tire scrubber. I didn't want to spend huge amounts of money on a dedicated brush for tires that at the time when I was first getting into detailing, I thought to myself, why bother? Why bother? Um, the, the size of the face, compare that to the smallest, which is the, uh, the Tough Shine, you know, it's really small. So it will take you longer to get round a tire here, but it has good ergonomics and, you know, it was, it was cheap. It was like... I don't know, 50p a pound at my local supermarket. So those are the brushes that I'm comparing the Tough Shine against. And then we've got to talk about why and how Tough Shine have gone about this. The how and the why. It's quite interesting, this one, because they are not going for super scrubbing action. There's a reason. I'll come into that later. It's just hang fire. But they're not trying to be as aggressive for a very good reason that we don't normally think about. Let's have a look at the flexibility of all of these bristles on all these brushes and find out how much do they flex with an even amount of weight on them. Uh, and just to clarify, I'm using these hand weights that my missus uses when she's on the treadmill. These are one kilogram weights, as they say on there, and these are gonna be laid on top of each one. And we're gonna have a look at the flex of each brush. All right, the first contender is the Detail Factory brush. So if I lay my weight on there, and then I'm just gonna pull backwards. I'm not pushing forwards, backwards. I'm not pushing up or down. I'm just gonna pull it backwards. And we're gonna look and see the flex of those bristles before they start to slide. This is on a dry tire. You can see the flex there. Let me push forwards. I'm not pushing down, Ooh, nearly. So there's a decent amount of flexibility there. I'm on the shoulder of the tire there. Let me just pull it over here. Yeah, there. There's the flexibility of the tires there. So pretty decent. And they spread out. Right. Let's have a look at the next one. Next up is the SGCB brush. This is my current favorite. I use this most of the time. Balance the weight on there. You can see there's not much. In fact, you can't even see that. I have to come this way. Still a, bit, a good bit of flexibility there. All right, the Tough Shine. You can see there's not much flex there. Not a huge amount, a wee bit. All right, the Vicon. This one's gonna be really difficult actually because it's, it's narrow and it's tall and it wants to flop about all over the place. So this one's also going to be quite funny. I tried this last night. Put the weight on there. And look at the, look at the flex. I need to whoo, try and balance it. Look at how much flexibility there is in those bristles. Look at that. That's just a kilo of weight on there. You can see they just sit down. All right. This black magic, ridiculous monstrosity. I don't know how I'm gonna keep the weight on this one. I'm just gonna to have to balance it myself. And we'll have to try and pull the bristles over to here. 
There's practically nothing. I'm having to kind of hold the weight above it. There's practically no flexibility there whatsoever. It's so stiff. All right. And finally, my pot washing brush. There's actually a decent amount of flexibility there. Like it's not, it's not super stiff, but it's not super flexible. It's somewhere in between. It's actually pretty decent. Now I want to take you in closer to this brush because there's a reason for this. I want to show you why this is different to all of the others bar one. And that is to do with the bristle length. If you have a look here on the side profile shot here, you'll see that there are some which are shorter and some which are longer. Can you see that there? So some of them, definitely stop shorter than others. If you look there, you can see it's sort of up and down, it's undulating. And that makes a difference when it comes to the softness because not every bristle is coming into contact with the face of the tire straight away. The harder you push, the more bristles there will be. So you can see there's a difference in the lengths there. If you go to the SGCB brush, for example, they are practically all the same. There's a few variations but not by much there, the, the difference between them is much less. You can see that they're roughly all uniform. They're roughly cut to that one side, that one size, sorry. This is the Tough Shine. We have a look there, that's practically the same. That's just been chopped, sliced right off. There's no difference there. That makes this a very aggressive brush. If we have a look at the Vican with the flocked bristles and you can see the flocking going on there, this flocking uh, that's not uh, an expletive, by the way. The flocking is basically the tearing of the bristles at the end and ripping them apart into thinner strands, essentially. So that makes this a very, very soft brush in comparison to the rest of them. Still not something I would want to ever subject my car's paint to, but much softer on the wheels. You can see they are all though roughly the same length, but there's that flocking going on there. Then we go over to this enormous black magic thing and same idea, roughly all the same length. And because there are so many of them, this being such a massive head, uh, that makes this the most aggressive of all. I mean, I can barely, I can barely move these. There's so much strength in these bristles. They're really, really stiff. And then lastly, to the pot washing brush, which I found really interesting actually, because if we can see close enough, and I'm not entirely sure if we're going to get this because they're white bristles. I might have to come in a bit closer here and let's see if we can uh, get some focus on this. Not really going to do too much too well here. They are actually different lengths. It's hard to see that because they're white, or at least it's hard to see on my screen. But they are different lengths of bristles. They're not all the same. There are short ones and there are long ones. And that goes all the way around the entire brush. So again, from a sort of cleaning perspective, less bristles come in contact when you make light contact, but then more bristles as you push harder and push deeper. So you get this very kind of soft washing ability from a gentle brush, but then you push more and you'll get more resistance as more of the bristles come into contact. Now, I guess when it comes to brushes, I think you have to actually see them in action. I know it won't really tell you much, but by seeing them, how they work and maybe how they foam up a product, because that could be something to do with it. I think a more flexible brush gives you more foaming effect. That's just my own experience. I don't know if you guys experience the same thing, but I find stiffer brushes don't do quite the same. I don't know if they don't aerate the product all that well. Anyway, I'm using Auto Glance Rebound here. This is a dedicated tire cleaner. You don't need to use dedicated tire cleaners. You can use all-purpose cleaners. You can even use some car shampoos. There's lots of them. One of my favorites is actually Garage Therapy Zero Decon Shampoo. Mix it down at 10 to one in a spray bottle. It's one of the best tire cleaners you get, but this is a dedicated cleaner. And I'm just gonna go around this tire here and I'm just gonna work a small section with this one brush. So here I'm going to be using the Detail Factory Pro Grip. Was that what I called it again? Pro Grip? I have to remind myself what it says. Yeah, Pro Grip Tire Scrub Brush. So a couple of sprays in the brush head and a couple of sprays on the tire. And you know what? It's interesting. It doesn't feel quite as stiff in my hand or against my hand as it does on the tire. It has 
a decent amount. It's got a decent amount of stiffness there. Um, this way I'm going with the grain of the tyre, those, those sideways lines, I don't even know what you call them. But that works really nice. I mean, I can't argue with that. As a scrubbing brush goes, you can see the filth and grime. This tyre has been sat outside for a long time. But that actually works really nicely. I can't argue with that. The, the grip is good, the rubber grip. It gives me confidence to know that it's not going to slip out of my hands. I like that. I like that. We'll move on to the next one. What did I say? That was the SGCB. Right, same idea again. We'll just spray a small section here and a couple of sprays into the head of the brush. Immediately there's more stiffness there. It's it's like it doesn't want to make full contact with the tire. You see, the stiffer the brushes are, the bristles, the less they're gonna to want to conform to the shape of the tire. Now, this is not a low profile tire. This is actually quite tall. Um, I don't even know what the profile of this is. I think it's a 65, could be. I can't even find where it is. Yeah, it's a 65 profile tire. So it's quite tall and it's got that rounded edge. And it means that here, I kind of have to work around the edge and then I need to curl in and get around the inner edge there. And I think I felt that the, the Detail Factory brush conformed a little bit more. The softer bristles helped to kind of spread out around the tire. So there was less of that, but I still do love this brush. It definitely feels much more aggressive. Very, very aggressive. And that's what I thought I wanted. I'll come to that shortly. I th that's what I thought I wanted, but I didn't actually want that. Uh, right. Let's move on to the Chemical Guys brush, or the uh, Tough Shine, it's branded Chemical Guys. So we'll spray a few sprays of that on there, a couple of sprays on there, and a quick. Now that's stiffer again, really stiff. And again, that block, that flat square block. Oh, it, it doesn't want, it doesn't want to move quite as easily on some of these sections of tire which have those lines in them. It doesn't want to move across them. It's fine going the other way, it's got no issue with that. But if you've got a heavily detailed uh, tire sidewall with all that that design on it and stuff, then it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be quite so easy to use. Again, I used to think this was great, but again those stiff bristles mean they don't conform to the, the roundness of the tire. Uh, then we'll go with the Vicon. So the Vicon, this is interesting because like I said, it's really, really soft, lovely and soft. How much of a, a cleaning job could this one do? Well, to be honest, again, it's about how much you want to clean. We'll come to this in just a minute. A few sprays on that. I have to spray a few more sprays because it's, it's a bigger area here. Now this, it goes around lovely. When you're moving it this way, with the tire, you know, the tire going this way and the brush going this way, it spreads out across that tire area really well. So it's really nice, it conforms to the shape of the tire nicely. And it makes quite a white froth. It's hard for you guys to see that from here, but honestly, it's more frothy, it's more foamy, it's more aerated. Uh, I can go, you know, either way, this is really nice. But I have this fear, this feeling, and I think this is something that's been drummed into us for a while, that fear that soft bristles won't get it quite as clean. The chemical does half the job, but there is physical ag agitation that you need to do with these brushes, which is why they are different. Um, but yeah, that's really good to use. I like it, but again, part of me in the back of my mind, it just says, it's not cleaning enough. You need something with a bit more bite. You need something to push into that dirt a little bit more. Then we'll move on to the enormous clubbing brush. <laughs> Let's get a, a section here. A couple of sprays, maybe a third spray on there. All right, let's just see if this is as bad as I remember. Oh God. <laughs> oh dear God. It's, it does not want to behave. It doesn't want to conform. It doesn't want to uh, cooperate with you in any way. It just says no chance. I am a stiff brush and that's what you get with me. I mean, you know, going with the lines of the tire, it's good, it definitely digs into those lines, but there's hardly any foaming. 
There's hardly any aeration. It looks almost like I'm just spraying the water with the tire with water. Sorry, that's interesting. Let's go with the pot scrubber brush. <laughs> My first ever tire sidewall brush. Small area to work on here. A couple of sprays. Ah, uh, you know what? I mean, okay, it kind of conforms. But you're working a small area. It doesn't really create much foam. Um, also, this tire is disgusting. And I think I've just wrecked my lovely white um, lab coat with all the spatter. I don't know if you guys can see that. I've got loads of spatter here. It's probably... Oh, look at that. I'm probably going to have to buy another one now. Um, this one's not as nice to use as the detail factory brush i actually think the detail factory one is the nicest one to use so far actually the most enjoyable um other than maybe the vican but the vican i think wouldn't have quite as much cleaning ability that's what i need to come on to next cleaning ability why do we need the tires to be super duper clean i've got something to talk about with this one right so i want to talk about dressings for a moment here if i can dressings this is where it's important about cleaning your tires it's not just about cleaning your tires all these brushes will clean your tires with some form of cleaner whether it's a, a dedicated tire cleaner or an all-purpose cleaner whatever it is they'll all do that job to varying degrees a very very soft bristle brush will clean it but maybe might miss some of that ingrained dirt, especially into the heavily detailed areas with all those little lines in your tires and all the lettering. It might not be quite so good. And then you've got things which are super duper aggressive, but again, might miss out on certain areas because it doesn't have that flexibility. You want something that's somewhere in between. And that's why I've been enjoying brushes like the Tough Shine because it does have a bit more flexibility than something like this, but less flexibility than something like the Vican. And then the SGCB feels a little bit softer again, has a little bit more flex from my feel, from my hand feel, than the Tough Shine brush. And then the Detail Factory really has hit the sweet spot. This brush covers all bases. It is due to those different lengths of bristles in the brush there. So the longer bristles, when you are giving it light pressure, will give it a light, gentle clean over. And then the shorter bristles, as you push more pressure into it, you start to engage those bristles and you get deeper cleaning. Now, why would you want light cleaning? This is something I want to talk about here to do with dressings. Now, a lot of dressings, my favorite dressings are the kind of dressing where it's not really a dressing, it's something which feeds your tire. Uh, my favorite one is Garage Therapy Tire Serum. It's an absolute game changer. I also really love Carscope Ink. These are great products which you apply with uh, a nice soft brush, something like this one from Carscope, which is a really lovely uh, tire applicator brush. It is fantastic for getting that dressing not only onto the tire, but evenly so that that dressing can get into the tire something like tire serum will actually feed and nourish your tire it's a great idea if you've got a car which you keep for the weekends you keep it outside you don't change your tires very regularly you'll know that sometimes they tend to crack and perish over time by feeding your tires by nourishing them with dressings like that you are helping them to stay supple for longer it's a bit like moisturizer on dry skin if you've got regular moisturizer on there, you're keeping it supple and soft. And that's what you want to do with your tires. So going with a really aggressive brush isn't always a good idea because you are gonna be scrubbing everything off. You're literally gonna be taking everything out of the tire, which is not always a good thing because you want some of that dressing to stay in there. Instead, I love the idea of the fact that with this brush, I can really scrub the tire, really get deep into it, but then, once I've applied my dressing or, you know, serum in this way, this, this essentially this moisturizer on my tire, I don't want to go and scrub it all the way back off again. So I'll come back in two weeks time and I'll give it a gentle clean. So I'm not giving it so much pressure with this brush and I can gently remove most of the dirt from the top. The tire serum, the, the dressing is going to help try and make that tire a little bit repellent. So that's going to help 
push some of that dirt off. It's like putting a wax or a sealant on your car's paint, how your car will be easier to clean when there's sealant because there's that repellency, that willingness to give up the dirt. Then you can use this brush. I mean, you could use a very, very soft brush like this one. It will do the same job, but it means that you also have to have something stiffer than this if you want to apply the dressing for the first time. So this brush covers both bases and I absolutely love it. And I think I have to say it's probably one that I have to recommend. I'm not being paid to say this. I didn't get sent this for free. I bought this with my own money because I heard good things about it. And it's a cracking piece of kit. I definitely think if you are an enthusiast about your wheels and tires, you want your tires to look good all the time, especially that it's coming to the nicer weather now. We're into April here. We're gonna see show season. In fact, it's already started in some places. You're gonna want your tires to look nice. So make sure you get you this brush and pair it up with a really good tire feeding dressing. Don't just have something which is full of silicones, which will just make it look super shiny and glossy all the time. You can use products like this and you can use multiple coats to build up that shine and gloss. But again, clean it regularly. You know, maybe once every week, every fortnight, grab your brush, grab an all-purpose cleaner, a dedicated tire cleaner, however it is you want, and give it a gentle clean over, release that dirt, and then get yourself another coat of your favorite dressing on top. But that's all for this video today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please do smash that like button. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next videos. In the meantime though, I've been Science Specky. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.